lots of comments <laughs> to my recent stories about um, just people's, other people's thoughts and feelings about what's going on in your life. And this topic comes up a lot around the holidays when last year I did Healthy for the Holidays Facebook group. And this big question or issue came up about other people's thoughts and feelings around your life and your choices and all of that. And then it kind of came up again in this Q and A thing that I just posted because several people asked a question about what to do about like an unsupportive family or unsupportive spouse when it comes to changing your nutrition. Um, and then the topic of like having kids or not having kids kind of comes into it and somebody Somebody very innocently just asked like, why no kids? And I totally know that that question is not meant to be like, why aren't you having kids? Like, I don't know. It's not meant to be accusatory or any of that, but it kind of spurred this other conversation of, or this other thought process for me, just as, just as plainly as somebody might really be curious about why we don't want to have kids or why I personally don't want to have kids, I really am curious, like, why why do you want to have kids? Um, I'm actually not that curious because, I don't know, like, I'm just not that interested. But I, I want other people to be curious for themselves or answer it for themselves before they make that decision. Um, <clears throat> feel free to chime in with what you guys think. Hey, you guys, thanks for joining. Um, but I, here's my thought. I have known since high school that I did not want to have kids. I just, I don't enjoy spending time with kids. I don't enjoy babies. I don't enjoy toddlers. I do enjoy kids who are like, it's not like I hate them. I just don't enjoy spending time with them. I don't like playing make believe. I don't like doing any of that. And I know that I would not have to play a certain way or I could do whatever I want if they were my own kids, but um, <clears throat> it's just, I'm just not into it, just not that into it. And I think if you're just not that into it, there's no reason why you have to do it. Um, yes, and it's a hot topic in the world of infertility and people, a lot of people commented to me and said, um, well, two things. One, no one asks this of men. So to your point, Maida, um, yeah, if you don't wanna have them, you shouldn't have them. But you guys, like you, ha listen, this is not my story. We have not been trying to get pregnant or any of that. Like, I, it's not like we've been trying and struggled or any of that. But what if it was? What if it was and all these people were, you know, asking questions? Um, so, <clears throat> and, and even if I was trying and saying that we didn't want to have them, like, it's my prerogative to say what I want to say about it. But a lot of people... Um, a lot of people were saying, you know, they've been dealing with infertility for a long time. Some people said seven years. And I mean, to ask that question, it's just, it's an insensitive question to ask one way or the other, either when are you having kids or why aren't you having kids? It's insensitive. And it's also like, who cares? You know, if it's one of your, if you're a very close friend to someone and it's an honest like friend conversation that then that person doesn't have to feel on the defensive for their answer. Like if you know that your friend wants to have kids and it's just like, oh, so like when are you guys planning to start or whatever, you can have that conversation with a very close friend. You know what I mean? But if it's somebody you don't know that well, I mean, that's it's literally like asking how much money do you have in the bank? It's just super personal. Um, and I think, you know, I just think everyone needs to be aware of that. And I think it's it's really important to know that um, not everybody feels the same societal pressure that other people feel. I have literally never wanted to have kids. And so I also, you guys, there's a huge upside to that feeling. Like I then did not feel the pressure to like, got to find a husband, got to do the thing, got to get pregnant, got to have the babies, got to do all this. And so um, what that did for me was give me more time and space to find the right husband. And so let me just roll this back to, um, let me just roll this back to the whole thing of the question that came up of like, what about if I have an unsupportive spouse I'm like, well, if you can't have an honest conversation with your spouse, like who are you married to? 
And I'm not being a jerk. Like that is a real freaking question to answer. That is the hard question. It's not how do I handle my spouse being unsupportive to my nutrition changes. It's like, who am I married to that's not supportive of my life decisions in a, in a direction of positive growth? And that is a really hard question. And it means, um, like, I can't tell you how to work with an unsupportive spouse because you've got a bigger issue there than not wanting to eat bread. Do you know what I mean? A repairman asked the other day how we got away with not having kids. What is wrong with people? Um, honestly, I think there's just a lot of people who are very... Uh, unaware of the way that what they're saying is coming across and yeah I think um, people are honestly like I, I just think like that that conversation is one that a lot of people are very um, asleep at the wheel in general just in life and don't realize that what they wanted for themselves is not what other people want for themselves or don't realize that other people, um, my parents never pressured me like, oh, we really wanna have grandkids. They're like, great, we'll come visit the dog. And you like, they're just like, this is your decision. <laughs> like it was just never a thing. But the reality is, I the reality is this, it's not just that they, um, don't say it. It's like my mom knows that if she were to say to me, like, I really want you to have grandkids, I'd be like, that's nice. You you can't want something for somebody else that they don't want. So get it off your mind because I don't want it and move on to something else that you might want because what you want has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? So I like your sets of wants and desires begin and end with you. And this is the ultimate problem that I see is that, um, that feeling of like my parents want or expect this thing of me, there's just a lot of shit there that I cannot unpack in an Instagram live right now. But um, I'm gonna talk about that stuff when I do finally create a program that's kind of like personal development and um, entrepreneurship oriented. It'll probably be more personal development oriented and then it'll have little facets of entrepreneurship in there. But the reality is I think becoming a good entrepreneur is just about becoming um, a more self-aware, self-assured, confident, capable person. Um, and then whatever you choose to do with yourself and your um, your wits, you know, having having those capabilities, you can move forward from there. Uh, let's see. complete strangers. Like I dare somebody, when somebody asks you about having kids, you'd be like, oh, how much money do you have in the bank? And when they're like, what? You'd be like, it's just as personal of a question and it's none of your business. So thanks, but no thanks. Um, um, Primal Nut, ask them who's gonna take care of them when they're old and ask how sure they are of that <laughs> because I had that conversation. It's literally the only reason why I'm like, should we have had kids to just like not be alone when we're 80? Um, and somebody else was like, there's no guarantee that your kids are going to take care of you when you're old. Like there's just no guarantee um, for a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. Um, some people's kids don't outlive them. First of all, that's a totally morbid thought, but some people's kids don't outlive them. So this is just not a reason to have them. I don't know what the reasons are, honestly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that person. So, um, um, and ancestral, I think Scott and I definitely are on that wavelength where we feel like our contributions to the world are not in the form of like tiny humans with our DNA. And um, I honestly feel like my contributions to the world and my impact will be much greater by not having children. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I would not be doing this, having this conversation with 72 of you right now. If I had kids, I'm sure my attention would be on them. And so I can either have one or two kids or I can help the thousands of people that I'm setting out to help all the time or millions, you know? Um, and I, I just think that that's 
that's what's for me, you know? Um, so combine the fact that I just don't like hanging out with kids. Um, and this isn't, it's not like a, a personal, like, oh, it's not like, oh, I hate kids or I hate my friend's kids or whatever. It's not that. It's just, it's some people don't like hamburgers. I don't like kids. <laughs> it's like, it is what it is, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm like, hey, I said to Cassie, I'm like, can I be Aunt Diane to, you know, to little Gray and to, you know, Liz's kid? Um, I'm going to be Aunt Diane and that's what I'm going to be. I actually just packed up a little something for each of them today that I'm just going to send just because I like want to be that aunt. I think that sounds really fun. Um, you know, I think also a lot of people don't really think it through. Now, moms, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think a lot of people really don't think it through. They just think like they want this thing. And then that shit's hard. And I am under no illusion about how hard it is, not just physically and attention wise, but like now multiply how hard it is for me to run multiple businesses by an emotional investment, you know? And um, I think that I have always been very acutely aware of how difficult that is. And, um, and I am not somebody who wants to make a choice and then complain about it. Like, yeah, here and there, I kind of talk about how much of a struggle I find it to sit down and write a book, but not really like mostly I just feel like I'm grateful to be given the opportunity and yeah it's it's a struggle for a few months but um by and large like I'm just super grateful for it and I think that anyone who look not everyone's in the same situation where it was a choice maybe you know maybe they were well I mean there was always a choice involved right they were they chose to be sexually active but um maybe somebody yeah, like why why does why do people not have any idea of how hard it will be? Like I've known since I was in high school and babysat how hard it would be. I'm like I have to pay attention to this annoying, wormy, squiggly, poopy thing like 24/7. No, thank you. Not interesting to me whatsoever. Glad my mom was interested. I'm not I mean, I'm just real like uh, this is an honest question. I am not being a jerk, but like why is it that people don't understand fully how difficult it will be do you know what I mean like there's a there's a real point of confusion for me around that it's like it's this massive emotional physical mental um invest the biggest decision people will ever make you know and um I mean they're making that decision more easily than buying a house or a car, you know? Just, it's just a big deal. Yeah, Katie, that's, I mean, that's a good point. I still, maybe because, um, yeah, maybe because I, I also, I was super, super aware of that, I don't know. Thought you'd be able to hand them off to a babysitter. I think some people have an easier time of doing that than others. I think a lot of people might honestly not be as um, as aware of their own attachment, you know? The benefit outweighs the struggle. What's interesting is that whether you're physically spending time with people or whether it's on the internet, I literally never hear expressions of that. And I'm not in that world, admittedly, but even not being in that world, like the amount of joy that people share about being a parent is like 1% to the 99% complaints. And I'm not saying people like need to change what they're, what they're doing. I don't care what people do. I'm just saying <laughs> that's the front that people put on about it. Um, and I think, yeah. Um, and also Brit, you know, I think there's, there's also this piece of, I get pet snuggles, pet snuggles are good to me. Um, there's also this piece of it where we think we know how hard it's going to be. And then it's even harder, made, made even more difficult by 
some kind of layer of complication. Um, and I think I've just always been like, I know that I'm not made for that. I'm not, I'm just not built for that. I'm not built for um, the emotional intensity because I'm aware of how, how deeply all of that will affect me. And so um, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to handle it. It's just, it, it will be too intense. So there's that. And I think Scott, if I had been somebody who like knew, I'm cutting something up now. Sorry, this is super annoying, but it's bothering me. Just, just cutting apart some labels. If I had been somebody who knew that I really wanted them, um, I think he could have gone either way on it. Uh, Junior Duchess, I think that is the case. I think it's like the college, the job, the boyfriend, the husband, the marriage, the kids. And I think there's this, not everyone, that's not everyone, but I think for a lot of people, um, it's this like just a societal norm and there is not a lot of like, is that what I really want consideration going into it? Cat, cat, my friends tend to disappear when they have kids and my attempts to spend time with them are turned down. It's like, I'm not let in. I don't care. I don't know if it's overwhelmed. Um, I mean, I've told all my friends who are having kids, I'm like, I'm not going to see you anymore. And it's not because I don't love you, but it's because your life is gonna be really different now. And also, I don't really like kids. And so don't ask me to hold the kid. It's not personal, I really don't wanna hold a baby. Um, and I just can't like hang out. And it's, it's re I don't know that parents of toddlers can feel um, what it feels like to be in the room with a toddler who I know full well needs pretty much 100% of your attention. Um, and for me, I'm like, I can't spend time with you and the toddler, you know? And that's not a personal thing. It's not like, I don't love you. And because you have a kid, I don't love you anymore. It's like, we can't engage when there's a toddler there who needs your attention. And that's okay. The toddler needs your attention, but our friendship has to change. And either there has to be a babysitter and we do something or, um, or we don't spend time and you spend time with your friends who do have a kid who they can, you know, play with each other if that's what they do. But other than that, it's it's really tough. Um, I don't know what you want me to say about that Harbor Journal. Um, you know, I was kind of talking about the choices that we make that lead to that or not. And so that's a series of bad decisions as well. Um, and for whatever reason, when I was younger, um, I paid attention in health class and did not make the bad decisions to, you know, I don't think it's for whatever reason. I think part of my personality is that I, I like to be in control of myself. And um, so I'm not one to, I mean, I, I drank, I'm sure. In, I mean, in high school and in college, but drugs were never something that, like, I can't speak to that because to me there was zero appeal to like losing control, losing my, um, what's the word? I can't even think of the word. Just like losing control of my own ability to, you know, make choices. There's a word that I'm just not, it's not coming to me. Um, <clears throat> Leslie, I mean, honestly, like we just have to find other friends too. My friends keep getting younger or I have some older friends who don't have kids. I'm looking at your comments. Yeah, and not having kids does allow me to focus on other things, <clears throat> spend time on my businesses. I, I you know, quote, employ their, their contract, but I have seven women on my team. If I had kids, I don't know that I would be able to pay seven women, who most of them do have kids, to do a job from home. Um, nobody's asking Oprah why she doesn't have kids. I just need to get a little older so people stop asking. I'm just kidding. Most people don't ask me. People in my life who are close to me don't ask me. Um, what else? Yeah, my faculties, that might have been the word. Like my, yeah. I felt like it was a C word. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, 
Yes, and freedom of choice is a really big part of who I am and what I feel, what I value. And so I know very well that with kids in the mix, freedom of choice is not a thing. Like, I, I do think that there are some people for whom, um, you know, you can really build a life and and not have it be where you don't do things because you have kids. And I have friends who live that way and I see that, you know, they still travel and they do things that they find really fun and just find another way. But it does require, um, you know, a lot of effort. Um, uh, Valerie, by that same token, I find that I can't relate to most of my audience for a lot of different reasons. Um, I can't relate to most of my audience because I'm not a mom and I don't want to be a mom. And I think that most of my audience, I would say probably more than half of the women who follow and read my stuff and use my books and recipes, et cetera, um, are probably moms or want to be moms. And that's really hard for me. Um, but I, you know, I think about Oprah <laughs> and I just think just because I don't have kids doesn't mean what I'm saying about all of that is not valid. So there's that. Um, but I really don't, I don't know. That's a hard thing. Like it's, it is hard for me to speak to women knowing that most women are moms or want to be moms. And, um, Hey guys, uh, and know that it's just not something that's for me. So when I talk about the way that I like move through the world and just the decisions that I make about life and business, there's always that side element of, you know, when you're a mom and you are always going to want to put your kids first. But I still, I still grew up paying attention to the way that my mom handled things. And, you know, she brought me to the gym with her and I was in the little daycare or sitting, literally, I remember sitting watching my mom do jazzercise like in the room. And I was, I guess I was a well-behaved kid. I just would like watch her or play in the corner. I have no idea. But, um, I don't know. I, um, and Britt, I think a lot, this is my, this is my thought. I think a lot of women, it's not personal, you guys. I don't know any of you. So don't take anything I say personally as if I'm talking about you because I don't know you. So you can't, you can't take something personally when I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? But I think a lot of women have children before they are not a child anymore themselves. I think a lot of women have children while their own personalities are not yet fully known and developed and they are lacking self-awareness about the way that they move through the world. Um, and so then that doesn't mean that you can't raise a well-loved, well-adjusted child if you don't have that awareness. But I really do think that, um, I think that that's something that happens very often. And so it becomes a struggle to then identify who you are and how you fit into the world aside from mom, like your mom and you don't like your, your sense of self just becomes shifted from child of my parents, high school student, college student, recent graduate with a new job, girlfriend, wife, mom. And there's no like, but who is Jane? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the thing is like, it should become part of your identity, but one of the best ways to be a really good mom is to have your own identity so that your kids understand how to have an identity. Do you know what I mean? Like they're learning how to be a person from you. And so if the only thing they ever see is that you are mom, then they don't know how to be anything other than mom and, and fill that role. And that's the role that they fill. And so what's probably happening is a lot of you only had that modeled for you. And I think I don't know that my mom realized she was doing it, but my mom always had like a social life and she always had activities she liked doing and she kept herself, you know, busy with exercise and her friends. And so I think that that, um, I really don't think that we're able to do this work until we're in our thirties. And so, um, and so I think that women who have children younger, 
you know, it's for some, it helps you realize that this is something you never did. Do you know what I mean? But I, I think that I honestly think, and I've heard this from a couple friends are like, I don't know that I would have done this work if I hadn't had a child to then realize X, Y, Z. But I think that this is just the age that it happens in our thirties. We're like, okay, I need to stop making those bad decisions because that's not turning out how I want it. And I need to choose something different. And why do I keep making that bad decision? Or why is this thing in my life not going the way I want it to go? Um, where's that coming from? And so, um, this time period from like literally from I think 30 to 40 and I'm sure someone who's 40 to 50 will tell me how much better it gets the older you get too but I really think that from 30 to 40 when you get out of your parents house but you're still dealing with their you know expectations coming at you and you realize that you need to make decisions on your own and you realize that a lot of the things that you're stuck with in your life right now are a result of having just kind of followed along um what everybody else wanted you to do instead of what you really wanted. Um, I think that that is where we, we kind of got off the kids, no kids topic, <laughs> but I think that's where the rubber meets the road. And I think that in your thirties is when this work is done. Um, and so I think this is where like personality tests come into play. And I think that, um, figuring out how to connect with your partner based on personality tests or um, something, you know, I do this with my close friends. I'm like, which Enneagram type are you? Which, you know, tendency are you? Figuring out like, okay, well, what does that mean for our relationship? Oh, this is why we get along so well. Oh, this is why we fought about this type of thing or, you know, whatever. Um, and I think that that is... Um, thank you, Drinking Sunlight. Maybe that'll be the name of my <laughs> my program. Um, I'm going to read back. I missed a bunch of your comments. And I'm sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, Leslie, Leslie Diane. Oh, being a pediatrician, I see so many parents with their kids. And I shake my head knowing they should never have had kids um, or they didn't want them. So interesting. Um, and I, I do see a lot of women who are older who have kids, like older meaning, you know, mid to late 30s who do have a different sense of self going into it. And here's the really big benefit. If this is any of you who like still have not yet had kids and want to or are trying to, I think that you become a much more calm mother, which is a good thing. Like being hyper vigilant and hyper like stressed about everything of course, you guys, if there's a health issue and whatever, things come up. But I'm saying the moms I know who were a little older starting out had a little more time to just like live and realize how to respond to life instead of react to it in this like hyper way, hyper and anxious way. Um, yeah, what else? Okay. Uh, live for many years on my own. Yeah, I mean, I lived on my own for a couple of years and several years. Really, really enjoyed that. Anyway, I was just, you know, just wanted to come chat with you guys. Oh, actually, Instagram does leave my clock. How long have we been chatting? It's been a while. I had a, I have a video call at four o'clock, so I had all the makeup on. I figured I would chat with you guys in the meantime, but... I think it's an interesting conversation and I screenshotted a bunch of the questions that you guys asked um, in response to my recent post so that I can cover them in some way going forward because I don't know this is just kind of where where I would like to head in the next couple of years it's just it's hard to it's hard to just like go into that world, but um, if any of you follow Rachel Hollis, I went and saw her movie. One of my friends invited me this week and I saw her movie um, and um, I don't think you get a chance to become your own person while you're being a mom in those, especially those early years. And it, I'm not saying that it's like you can't or you should have and you didn't. It's just more like naturally that takes over, you know. Um, but so I saw Rachel Hollis's movie. If any of you have read her book, 
girl wash your face or you saw her movie, let me know. But um, I do not relate to the women in the audience like of her seminar. And so for me, like I relate to Rachel as Rachel as the teacher. And when I saw the movie, I was like, I need to be doing this in my way with the messages that I need to share and the insights that I have about just like human nature and the decisions we make and who we are as people. Um, and ultimately, the, the big thing that I feel is a challenge is the part about like not being a mom and not being able to relate to that life. But then I just remember Oprah and I'm like, Oprah's not a mom either and it's okay. She still is going to teach women how to adult and they can put their mom hat on with it or not, whatever their choice is. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what comes from it, but I don't relate to, like I guess her next book is called Girl Stop Apologizing. I'm like, don't want to read that, have no interest. I'm unapologetic for probably more more than probably should apologize for some things. I do apologize if I really do something wrong. Um, but so if any of you see that movie and you're like, you know what, Diane, here's what I want to learn from you. Come tell me because I just, I see myself doing that. I just don't know what it will look like because it's different. Yes. You guys, there's a lot of you watching here. What else do you want to talk about? We've got a few more minutes. We don't just have to talk about the kids, no kids topic. It's what I pinned, but um, anything else on some of the stuff that I was talking about in my story recently, what is going on here? <laughs> you guys, this weird hair situation. Um, here's the other thing. Like I see a lot of men in the entrepreneurial space sharing motivational quotes and information and um like the grind and the hustle and all of that and I don't relate to what they share either I mean I'm hustling all the time and grinding and working on my business and all of that but um no spouse support. So I talked about this earlier, Mama Chick, so you could re-watch because I actually talked about it super early on. But um, that's going to be a hard conversation because if your spouse is not supportive of something that you want to do that's for positive personal growth, then that means you need to have a lot of hard conversations with your spouse because who are you married to that's not supportive of that kind of thing? That's really the bigger question. Um, yes, my hair gets painted. Did you struggle with self-confidence? How'd you overcome? Um, I do not remember a time. This doesn't mean that there aren't things that I don't feel 100% about, if that makes sense. Like I haven't really exercised a ton in the last year. I haven't lifted weights. And like, I'm not, you know, feeling 100% thrilled with my lack of definition, my arms or whatever. But does that make me lose self-confidence? No, because my confidence is not wrapped up in whether or not my shoulders are popping, <laughs> frankly. Um, and I think that I think that being somebody who is always interested in learning new things and gaining new skills and contributing to the world in a way that doesn't have to do with how I look or and that doesn't mean I don't want to like put makeup on and be cute, but um I think that maybe people have their confidence wrapped up in the wrong things and um, becoming capable of taking care of myself and learning skills and trying things and doing them and failing and then doing them better the next time, that's what builds confidence. So whoever is holding you back from trying things that you want to try and taking a class or you know, burning a steak the first time and then grilling it better the next time. Like those are the things that build confidence. Like ultimately knowing how to do a lot of things to take care of myself. That's what makes me confident. I don't really know. I don't know what that would feel like either. This is the other thing that 
you know, sometimes I feel like in order to teach something, I need to be able to truly empathize with how it feels. So obviously I can't empathize with how it feels to be a mom and want to have a business. And I can't empathize with how it feels to be really struggling with like deep self-confidence issues. But I think, I think the word confidence is to an adult, what just self-esteem is to like an adolescent or a teenager. And so if you think about what we were told to do or not do when we were younger to, to build self-esteem, it's the same things. Um, and for some reason, we think that just because we're an adult, we're not going to need that anymore, but we do. And if you're surrounded by people who are not uplifting and supportive and believe in you, you need to detach from them. And I think that I think that the real struggle is a lot of people probably have parents who are more damaging than helpful. And that sucks because that would really suck if that were my parents. And I can't also relate to that. Um, uh, you know, there are some relatives in my family. Have, I have an aunt who I'm just like, I don't like her. Um, we're not related by blood, but even if we were, I don't like her. I don't like the way I feel when I'm around her. I don't like the way she talks to me. I don't like the way she talks to other people. So I don't spend time with her. It's as simple as that. I'm an adult. And so I need to really make those decisions for myself. As soon as I could make those decisions, I just opted out of those kinds of events. Um... Jessica, if I could tell you, I don't know how I'm productive. Um, I just, I, there are a lot of things that I want to do. So I just, I do them because I want to do them and I don't do anything that I don't want to do. So there's that. Um, so, um, if anybody here has something that you have felt recently has helped you helped you to build confidence feel free to shout it out um, but I my confidence I build my confidence by doing things I enjoy that I'm good at um, and then if I don't know how to do something here's how you don't build confidence by saying I don't know I don't know how to do that I don't know how to do that I can't do that nope don't know how can't do it I really want to do it but I can't woe is me. Like that will be a sure shot to not building confidence. Um, so you don't know how to do something? Freak, man. You guys, this is like the age of YouTube videos, how to do anything. So you don't know how to boil an egg? Freaking YouTube it. Learn it. Figure it out. Try it 10 times. Poach an egg? Try it 10 times. Figure it out, you know? Um, all the things that you're like, I don't know how to do that, that make you feel disempowered, learn how to do them. Put the time in. You know, um, thanks, Kara. Um, our pets are kids too, right? Yeah, I think so too. And I think the more um, awake and self-aware people are, and I think the more um, women are in the workplace, I don't know why people are asking that question so much about why we don't want to have kids. I'm like, I have other things I want to do. I don't need a tiny human hanging on to me 24 seven for like the first 18 years of their life. It's just, I just like literally 0% of that sounds enjoyable to me. So if it doesn't sound enjoyable, why are we doing it? If it sounds really enjoyable to you, great. It's your prerogative, do it. Yeah, I, I mean, Building self-confidence also came from wanting things when I was a kid and not being willing to accept no for an answer. And so my mom says, no, I'm not going to buy that for you. Okay, well, what can I do to make that happen? You know, and just like do work and um, earn the money and buy the thing myself. I feel like a lot of people who have kids get offended by or have issues with people deciding not to. It's, it's the whole, are they, they're judging me for making a different decision. Honestly, sometimes I feel like people with kids like want to commiserate. And I'm like, I'm not interested in that particular brand of misery. I will choose different types of misery, like sitting my butt in a chair all summer for the last six summers of my life to write a book that will help someone get off of their diabetes medication. That's my choice of a particular brand of misery that I enjoy that is painful, but 
beneficial to someone else, you know? Um, so I think we can all choose those things in different ways. <laughs> Melanie, thanks. I mean, I do feel like um, a lot of what I do with the team of women who work with me for Team Balance Bites, I feel like a mom, you know, even though, well, two of them are older than I am. But in some ways, I'm not like they aren't capable women and moms they are on their own, but on the team. Um... Yeah, and Kimberly, was that you who said that you, two kids you adore, um, and one is ADHD? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm under no illusion that if I were to have children, they would be 100% healthy. Who knows? You never know. And it's not to say you love them any less at all. Um, it's just obviously going to be more challenging. And I'm... Um, under no illusion that that's not a very distinct possibility. Yeah, the, the drama and the judgment and all of that. All right, you guys, I think I should wrap this up so I can chill out for a little bit before my call at four o'clock, but it's been lovely chatting with you. Hopefully this was fun for you. If not fun, informative, educational, thought-provoking perhaps <laughs> um, this is backstage but then I put a little bit of little black dress over it I think to make it a little more colorful that was backstage thanks Melanie um, thanks you guys Fun hanging out, chatting. Um, I love it too, Jen. I think it's fascinating. And I need to figure out a way to make this the stuff that I get to do kind of all the time. You guys wanna know what else is really crazy? My sister um, is a psychotherapist and she's writing two books on insomnia, yoga for insomnia. And one of the books she's writing is for instructors and one of them is for everyday people. Um, and how wild is that? That the two of us live in different countries. She lives in London. Um, and yet this is where we've come to. Isn't that wild? I think it's so wild. Um, we're so similar. Very, very, very different as well. Just different life experiences, different um, personalities, but so similar in what we've chosen to do with ourselves really interesting <laughs> and when she said she was gonna write two books at the same time I'm like you must be crazy you guys seen coming to America I quote that one a lot but anyway all right you guys well thanks for joining me that was really fun and interesting and I will hopefully save this if Instagram lets me save it for somebody to watch another time I'll see you by, I'll see, I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys next time. Um, he just tried to wave. Oh, hi, Kara's husband. I don't know what his name is, but hopefully uh, you're enjoying the masterclass, Kara. I'll try and save it, Hannah. Okay, guys, I'll catch you another time. Bye.